How about Mondays? I hate Mondays. Mondays are the worst. Let me ask you something. When you come in on Monday and you're not feeling real well, does anyone ever say to you, sounds like someone has a case of the Mondays? No. No, man. No, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. Welcome to the Monday Weekly Recap episode. No! God, please, no! 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 On today's episode, Big Drewski and Casper break down all of the college football action from all of the games and events from this past weekend. Today's episode is sponsored by The Depot Print House, www.stakating.com, and True Tennessee and Clothing Company. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave the boys a review, because again, I can't stress this enough, but they have literally no clue what they are doing. Boy, that escalated quickly. Let's get on into today's show. And as always, have a happy Monday. Giggity. All right, here they come. Get my monitors kind of whacked the right direction, but for now, that's what I'm going to have to do. Just letting you know. If you see me yeah, looking I mean, that's... don't get mad. Uh, well, you know, I mean, as an intern, you know, good help is hard to find. And you're also the only one that applied. So, I mean, I can't get too mad, right? Uh-uh. That's what I'm saying. What the fuck is this doing? Oh, my God, bro. So, I'm guessing you've just completely screwed your studio setup up? Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much the one. I don't know well, what. I just can't get this one tab. All I need to do is get this tab back to this page, and it will not come back. All right, we're rolling. So welcome, welcome to the Little Tangerine Show. <laughs> I am your host, Big Drewski, and with my co-host, Casper the co-host. As you can see, we're just having all kinds of technical difficulties. I finally got my stuff figured out. And uh, Casparoni just, you know, he, he's got like eight screens now. The man cave is popping. It looks phenomenal um, from the pictures I've seen. We're really just trying to take this a step above, not to be professional, but so our wives think that we are. <laughs> hey, so, man. so first things first, uh, me and Casper are wearing the same shirt, it looks like. Uh, oh, I'm wearing a pullover. You look like you got Columbia on. Is that accurate? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm wearing I wore that Columbia. yesterday. But. Uh, I was about to say, I was like, oh, dude, are we are we rocking the same shirt? Uh, I did go with the camo top, though, because, you know, we just be vibing. But, uh, yeah, no, it was an awesome weekend for college football. Um, before we get into that, though, um, just, I mean, stuff to have. You know, I feel, so I think people enjoy just hearing behind the scenes like how our weekend stuff was but uh so i had i thought i was gonna maybe have plans and then casper and t fitty just you know crapped all over them so i was left left with my pants down I, you know i could have went and got some meat to grill i guess but then i was like well maybe i'll hang out with my extended family and then that didn't happen either so i ended up just vegging out and watching that might be the most football i've actually watched this year just yeah. vegging out. There was a lot of good games on, dude. It there was, was. I mean, a lot. a lot of a lot of close games, man. I mean, it was it was awesome. But yeah, no, we just kind of hung out with family or whatever. Then uh, I, I did a live last night, um, which was which was awesome. Which shout out to all the people that was on there. I had a yeah. Thank you. Blast. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. What? I was on there. Yeah. No, you were on there for a minute, um, but. uh yeah, it was awesome. I mean, it, you know, it, it reminded me of old times. I mean, you know, at any point there was I don't know, 20 or 50-ish people in there. But, you know, I looked afterwards because um, everybody's really active and engaged. And there's a bunch of people that were like, oh, dude, this live is awesome because we just sit around and talk college football. But to the, you know, um, 379 people that, you know, different people that commented to the three, you know, 1,665 likes and the 4,700 views thank you very much it was awesome uh but yeah no i hung out with them and then woke up and kind of stumbled in the church this morning because i was you know i stayed up later than i should mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. we went to texas roadhouse afterwards where my waiter was trying to really just drive that bill up just you know mm. in a very obvious manner it, it was literally like 
Yeah, I'll get mashed potatoes. You want bacon bits? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, and then I'll take some fries. You want to make them loaded? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, and then give me a steak. You want them uh, mushrooms and everything, the cheese on it? No, nope, no, nope, I'm good. Plain's fine. But yeah, no, it was, it was, you know. But uh, mm-hmm. other than that, you know, pretty good weekend. Went and hung out with my father, my Faja and my stepmother, mm-hmm. and then we came home and crashed. Uh, uh, it was kind of a lazy weekend. But you Sounds were like down on party. You were down there on campus tailgating, so there people may have spotted Casper and just no. not realized it was no, him. No, they, they didn't. I'm a pretty <laughs> small guy. It's easy to miss. Um, anyways, no, no, we're talking about height. Not, not, yeah, so you know. Before we get to that, so my weekend, <laughs> uh, it started on Friday night, and um, it was a great time. There was some debate about what was going on at my house uh, over the weekend for the rest of the weekend. And, talking about uh, with me, you and T Fitty, or with uh, you, and the lady, uh, Lady yeah. Casper, me and Lady Casper. And did, uh, anyways, did you have to educate her that you guys didn't tailgate, or did that ever come? Up? Uh, <laughs> I'm saving that. We we can have a debate about that tomorrow, by the way. But uh, I'm saving that one. I haven't. I, quick, quick, quick disclaimer from Casper. I don't personally. If there's not a truck tailgate involved. In any way, shape, or form, it is not tailgating. Um, if you go to somebody's house and you all sit inside on the couch in the air conditioner and drink beer and eat wings, and that's not tailgating. Sorry, um, it's a it's a, just a watch party. There's nothing wrong with it, but just don't call it a don't call it tailgate. Anyways, I so think get, for me, just for the record, because I missed this debate between you and T Fitty, but. Yeah. For me, a I consider a tailgate if you all congregate in a parking lot somewhere. You don't literally have to be on a tailgate. I know that's literally the definition of tailgating, but I think if you get together in a in a combined parking lot, then that's more tailgating. Like what you guys did is probably more tailgating than anything, but. Uh, but yeah, no. If you go over to your buddy's house and you guys grill out in his backyard, it's not really tailgating. Yeah, it's just a so, grill out. So what so. we did yesterday was definitely tailgate. We went down and hung out for uh, some of our friends. Uh, they were having like a little birthday celebration for one of my buddies. Happy birthday to him! I took him a nice bottle of um, Four Roses Small Batch. Uh, it's a great birthday present. Uh, if it was me, I'd be happy with that. Anyways, my birthday's coming up. <clears throat> So mine is know. in October, so uh, so is mine. Know. I don't even know when your birthday is, which is weird because we know each other for a while now. But mine's also in October. So. I'm one of those. I'm I'm weird, dude. I'm one of those people. Like yeah. literally, I worked at the truck driving school, and every single year they would be like, "So when's your birthday coming up?" I'm like, "Oh, it's like two months ago," oh, like because okay. they always did the cake and stuff. I just I think it's funny to let it come by and then be like, "Yeah, you guys didn't even say yeah. you know happy birthday to me." But, but yeah, uh, I did go down on campus. Uh, before the game hung out and uh, had a good time, watched a little football, watched a little bit of the Colorado game wrap up there. Um, hey, there was a, I don't know if you've seen, now granted minus all the former players, but I don't know if you've seen or not, but there was a, there's a pretty big celebrity down there. Did you see that? No. You, did, didn't, you, didn't, see you didn't see the, the celebrity? I don't, I don't know if you know who I'm talking about, but he's I mean, kind of a big deal. Who you're talking about he's, but he's I, internet I sensation i did not see him ginger his... billy was down there <laughs> yeah. yeah no I, I did not uh we weren't there very long my wife got six so we kind of had to cut it short i didn't know i didn't know ginger um, billy was even like a balls fan or whatever but yeah he was walking around down yeah, there i was like well what? he i don't know that he is a balls fan we looked we're go ginger billy anyways um i think that guy's crazy personally <laughs> But uh, I think yeah, I mean, hilarious, so we yeah. went down there and had a good time, you know. But uh, then we ended up coming home, and I watched football after that. Stopped at the grocery store, uh, made the wife drive us home. Told her to stop me at the grocery store so I could get some stuff to make some cheeseburgers. Made some banging cheeseburgers last night, dude. I almost I mean, was gonna hit you up because we. I think I put the daughter down at like yeah. seven. And yeah. I was literally about to. I, I thought about just driving over there and being like, "Hey, guys, yeah. we're, 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 I probably would have let you knock on the door, but if you'd have called, 
given the sickness that's going around, I really probably would have told you no. Um, but I, I also thought about calling you just for the record. But you know, I got invited to another party that I didn't want to go to either. So like after um, the, the alleged tailgate. Yeah, yeah. T Fitty's party. I can say that because I know he won't listen to the show. Um mm. Oh but, yeah, he's hardcore trying to trying to recruit yeah. us. So sure. you know, but I came home, made some wings, or uh, made burgers, and then today Sunday, spent the afternoon watching Talladega, one of my favorite races of the year, eating chicken wings, and I waited until after the game to make chicken wings because I did not want to uh, seem irreverent about the Gamecocks yeah, coming into the I... game. But uh, now that it's over and we won, I enjoyed every bite of them cocks. I just want to let you know. Which, by the way, Vols fans, we're going to talk about that game. That'll be the first one we cover. Don't worry. But yeah, no, I did the same thing. I threw grilled chicken on my pizza last year. It's like, ha ha, yeah, it's yeah. for the game, Cox. Mm-hmm. And then we got just absolutely, yeah, you know, monkey yeah. punched in I, the throat. So I didn't want to do that. But no, man, it's been a good weekend overall. I did some eye racing, really working on getting my grade up. Um, somebody said I recorded waiting. this podcast like 45 minutes early and kind of. Screwed me out of a I'm, race or I'm two. Wait, but that's well, okay. Hey, you can always race afterwards, but I'm waiting on that no, streaming. Go to bed. I'm waiting on that streaming because uh, you know I want to sit there and watch you make fun of you. you know? Yeah, I got to get better first. We really have to improve. <laughs> whenever I rookie class for a reason, okay. Whenever I come over there, I, I would like to. I, I I was like, man, it'd be kind of fun to try, but I'm pretty sure I'll yeah. jack all your stuff up. No, I'll let you try and a, practice when it doesn't count it, against me. I was, was going to say, well, <laughs> see, that's, there's no fun in that. But, yeah. yeah, no, no. I mean, there's a lot of people have ruined people's eye racing ratings, not realizing what they're doing, and it really will mess you up for a long time. Oh yeah, I'm sure. So. But yeah, the uh, so the balls came out in the dark mode uniforms. They didn't oh, disappoint, yeah. which you know Seth was a little, you know, our was buddy worried. Seth was worried. Was Casper worried. was worried as well. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, you were more worried about like, no, we don't need to have the the, the alternates. But I was like, well, I mean, the, the black uniforms worked for us, so yeah. You know. But uh, it was funny when I was live streaming, you know, because I'm like, well. It's whatever. It's like seven forty-five. Let's just go ahead and live stream. Which, for the record, I'm only going to do on TikTok from here on out. Just, just so everybody knows. Um, but I had several different people hop on there that was like, "Oh yeah, do do do." And there's this one guy, DC Collins fifty two, hopped on there. He's like, it was halftime. He's like, "Oh yeah, well, you know." Make sure you're still going live in the fourth quarter. I'll be back. I don't want to hear it then, you know, uh, talking all the smack. And then uh, I thought he was going to ghost me, but he did finally come back in and said, good game, and they hopped back out again. <laughs> mm. But uh, I was like, bro, I ain't going nowhere. Hey, look, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't hard to find. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. thank you, like I said again, everybody hopped in live. Thank you for all the new listeners. We've been, We've been killing it you know here lately so that's that's definitely good um so we're gonna do one of our favorite segments um this may or may not be uh boring or not but uh i it's we're gonna do the drink of the week although to i guess today it's the drink of the week end I know you're growing to love that little intro. Don't you lie to me. I was dancing over here to it. Don't you lie to me. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I mean, most of it was Coors Light, but I did have, uh, I, I went kind of baby back on it, but I got the uh, Jeez. original Club Tales Bahama Mamas uh, for the lady. I did have a hurricane as well. I had one of those Hard Rock. Was it Hard Rock? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. It's one, mm-hmm. yeah, Hard Rock uh, Hurricanes. Those were very good as well. But uh, the lady wants Bahama Mama, so I got them, and I'm like, hey, it's orange, so whatever. Pound it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about mm-hmm. old Casper? Old Casper, let me give you guys the recipe for this drink. You take four ounces of water, you pour it in a glass, and then you get you two Alka Seltzer Severe Cold tablets, and you dump it down in there, and then let it fizz out. <laughs> You take it like a shot, and it'll make you feel a thousand times better if you feel like a butt. So, Seems um, like a pro tip. I'd recommend that. I did one of those right before the show. I'll be doing one tomorrow on the way to work. Nothing like a shot on the way to work. You know what I'm saying? Hey, at least you're going. 
but uh yeah that's all i had no i mean i had some miller light you know but that's you know my go-to so nothing too crazy so uh any crazy sports headlines from this weekend that stuck out to you that you were just oh the yes. one that you sent me about oh i was gonna say that the recruits oh. charging per visit but no, what was go you ahead. do that do that first dude yeah so you sent me that casper sent me an article that was basically like apparently recruits are like charging five thousand dollars just to visit a college now where back in the day that was considered an honor to get a scholarship offer, you know, but now they're yeah. like charging $5,000 to visit, which I think is insane. Um, I get it. Don't get me wrong. I get it. But I'm just saying that. I mean, so I have a couple questions about that. Are they cover? Are these teams already covering travel expenses? Cause I don't know the answer to that question. And I would like to know if it does good, or not. Good question. I mean, you know, like, are you saying maybe five thousand to go towards expenses? And they keep what's left over. Or are you saying five thousand and then they still cover I, travel? I'm just saying, if if the schools are already covering the travel expenses, food, restaurants, hotels, yada yada yada, they really don't need to be paying them extra on top of that. And the fact they are is ignorant, in my opinion. So um, that's what I'm saying about that. I guess it's just a way for the recruits to strong arm more money. Yeah, but like, I mean, hey, I'll come visit your school if you pay me five grand. Which okay, like, so insane. if you do twenty visits, that's a hundred thousand dollars. These schools cannot pay for that. Why? Look, you don't need a five thousand dollar deposit if you're going to come there for you know forty, fifty thousand a year. At some I mean, point, what I think what's going to happen is we're going to get in a Lamar Jackson situation where eventually, you know, the NCAA, all these schools are going to band together and say, like, no, nah, bro, we ain't doing it again. You know, I think the conferences stand. are going to take control over their spending on all this uh, like as we go to bigger cap. conferences. And as I've told you before, I think the NCAA to some extent is going to go boom. Bye. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Uh, my big news is uh, the Atlanta Braves are the uh, best team in baseball headed into the postseason. Uh, they broke a record today. 301 home runs, baby, for the Braves this year. That is an MLB team record for the season at 301. Matt Olson hit 54. Uh, I think we had three guys over 40 or four guys over 40, including Acuna, Olson. Stuck on that, Freddie. Yeah. yeah, Freddie. Well, I mean, we're probably going to get the old Dodge Airs here um, in a couple weeks, but pretty excited about that for the Braves. So I will be sporting the Braves hat. From now until I attend the World Series this year, and, dude, I uh, really would love to go to the World. I mean, like, like I said, dude, um, Braves have been my t- my team for as long as I can remember. Yeah, um, my grandfather's a hardcore fan. I I really wish that I could work. I just I can't ever seem to catch them. Um, I've been like just really locking down on college football, so I've kind of tried to focus more on college football. Casper's been more focusing on the Braves. That way we can tag team it a little bit. But, uh, dude, I would love to go see a World Series game. But, honestly, I probably need to rock a Braves hat as well just for good luck. Although, that might change. I don't know. Somebody's got to wear a Tennessee hat on here. And I still do have the Tennessee shirt. Uh, But, look, here's the deal. I'm excited about the Braves. Looking forward to it this weekend. I haven't gone to any games this year because I'm saving up uh, to go because I talked to Dad. And I was like, look, man, we make it. It's going to be expensive, and we're probably going to have to stand for like $3,000 a ticket, and we're just probably still not going to have a seat, but we're going. Um, so I'm hoping they can do it because that is my plan is to go. So I'm hoping they get it done. Um, other than that, boring weekend at Talladega for my NASCAR, you know. But uh, so not a whole lot else to talk about that I've really seen. There's now. a lot there's, of leg football, injuries man. this weekend. Honestly. There's a lot of injuries in general in football. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of them was like, you know, uh, yeah, leg specific injuries, so which is weird. It, it's like, is there something in the air? Was there a lot of like, you know, full moons? I don't know, like, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I can't think of anything other. I mean, we'll probably think of some stuff as we go along here, but other than that, um, you know, like I said, some of you guys may or may not have uh, bumped into Casper down there around campus and not realized it. Like, who's that tall guy out there walking around? But we're going to take a quick break. Don't go nowhere, baby. Little Tangerine Show. We're coming back.
Welcome back to the Little Tangerine Show. We're going to go ahead and get on to a lot of these awesome games that happened over the weekend. Tennessee Vols at home with the alternate uniforms uh, got it done against South Carolina, 41-20, to um, which me and Casper both picked Tennessee. Um, we were a little nervous, but they, they played a lot better than I thought that they were going to, just to be honest they with did. you. They um, did. For the first time, man, I feel like I got a glimpse of uh, last year's team, man. It, it, they really started clicking, and I don't. It, now I will say it did seem like they opened up the playbook. Um, I swear, sometimes I really honestly think that someone over there at the university is listening to our podcast because did, did it not feel like they did just about everything we told them to do? <laughs> like, a little bit. A little bit. I mean, we turned a Joe Milton bit like loose. Send it, Joe. Joe. Yeah, I mean. It's your, turn, it's your time, Joe. Turn Joe yeah. Milton loose. I mean, he, he was yeah. running the ball a little bit more. Looked like he was calling we, some check downs and actually yeah. running the offense. We were doing more hurry up. Yes. Um we called we called some options. We lined it up, let him read it in the box, like I was saying we've been needing to do for the whole year. Like threw a couple a, trick plays in there. Yeah. Yeah. Shut their trick plays down too, by the way. Against Dude, our defense Big deal. was absolutely killing Big it. Deal. And I mean we got the ball to the playmakers, dude. I mean, yeah. you know. Um, and, uh, you know you Cooper Mays, big difference, man. I felt like I was curious. I'm really kind of wanting to know if you felt like the O-line was better. I felt like it was. They were struggling a little bit in the beginning, but I feel like they kind of locked it in towards the end a lot better. Um, yeah. And I think Cooper probably had some some rust, you know. Yep. Um I don't, hopefully he's not still playing hurt, which speaking of hurt, Brew McCoy, dude, uh, yeah. to those of you that don't know what we're talking about, didn't see it, I would recommend not looking at it, but uh, he had a really bad um, injury. He got tackled, kind of fell on himself, and his like ankle was like wrapped around his leg pretty much. I mean, it was bad. Yeah. Um, I was watching live and I didn't see it. Everybody's like, "Ooh, oh, 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 oh!" And I was like, "What happened?" Because he was holding his head. I thought maybe he had like a head injury. Um, and they, I was like, "I oh, will well, show the replay," and they never did. So then I rewound it, and I kind of wish I wouldn't have. But I was like, "Oh God!" Yeah. Um, so hopefully he's okay. Um, I'm assuming he's probably going to be out for the rest of the year. Um, I really thought in that moment that that was going to deflate the entire team. Um, kudos to them. I mean, they did turn around and, and play, you know, play through it and everything. But uh, throughout the season, that's 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 a big deal, you know. So, but uh, you know, I think you texted me like right after that. I'm pretty sure I was like, "Ouch!" Here's the deal. I mean, we've been saying this all year too. Somebody's got to step up. A receiver squirrel is clearly was the one yesterday, I think, that looked the best. But some of these guys, man, Castles, uh, Nimrod now, that look, these balls hit y'all in the hand. You have got to catch them. I mean, I, I'm i sorry. How many, I mean, how many balls? I mean, there was one that hit the dude. Uh, it was, I think it was Nimrod. Dead square. Uh, it was like two it, hands and then in the face mask. It was either like, Nimrod. Come on, bro. <laughs> yeah, it was either Nimrod. I don't remember... I'm pretty sure it was Nimrod. It could have maybe been Castles. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, hitting dead square in the hands, and it's like, yeah. bro, I mean, it's easy for us to sit here and say you got to catch right. those, but right. you literally have to catch those. Right. And, and look, if they're saying he's throwing too hard, then he's got to figure out how to tone that down. I, it doesn't matter. We have to have completions, what I'm saying. And well, the thing is, though, honestly, I feel like he has. I mean, I've seen. I agree. And that's why first, he's throwing behind so much. Yeah, and the first interception, man, was just a great defensive play. But the second one was because he was trying to take some off. Yeah. Left a little bit too much air in it, and uh, our guy had to try to come back to it. But it's one of those way things, man, you can't have it both ways. Like, honestly, if Milton just dropped back and slung it, he would probably be a lot more accurate. But it doesn't matter if, like, our guys can't catch it. But, um, yeah, but yeah um, offensive line looked better. Play calling looked more creative. Um, we did a lot more. We were able to get our playmakers the ball. Um, we were catching balls for once. Um, defense looked phenomenal, um, which, you know, some of the people in the lives were saying things like our defense is actually playing good for once. And I'm like, what? Do y'all, y'all don't watch football? all year. 
y'all don't watch football, do you? Because like our defense actually has been much improved, and we're like first or second in a lot of defensive line like QB hurry stats, tackles for loss, sacks, stuff like that. But uh, six sacks yesterday for the old Voluntolds, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That is pressure. Yeah. And listen, this was a Spencer Rattler that. I was worried about coming out and torturing us because I really think that Rattler's one of those guys that plays up when the lights are on, and the lights are on when you go to Neyland an for night game. And uh, I was worried about it. I was nervous about him just going off, but I felt like we, we put pressure on him, did what we had to do. So, well, I mean, like, like I always say, you know, he's, he's as consistent as a McDonald's ice cream machine. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, this game here, I mean, just for the South Carolina fans, for the record, you know, he looked if y'all, okay. If y'all had an offensive line, that's yeah, a game. That's a, I, mean, I was going to say, honestly. that's how it was, you know, when they played my Tar Heels earlier this year, too. If they had an offensive line, good God. Yeah. I mean, shoo, and that running back they got, um, ah, shoot, uh, blah, 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 blah. Washington, is that it? Said no, they're running no, back. Uh, yeah. I think it's Anderson, Anderson. Jr. Dude, the he- that is a dude. Yeah. That is a dude. Yeah, he's good. I know I mean, he, he ripped that long, the one long one, but he's just he's a dude. Um, well, I mean, he had one really long one, but every time he got the ball, you had that feeling like he could bust yeah. it at any time. Yes. I mean, ten carries, hundred one yards. I mean, he averaged. I mean, granted, he had one seventy five yeah. yarder, Correct. but they were they were so far behind past a certain point they really couldn't run it anymore. They right. kind of had to try to throw out of it, which. Yeah. Rattler, you know, 24, 35, 169 yards to one interception. Joe Milton, 21 of 32, 239 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Um, In the interception category, obviously that was like his worst game that we've seen him play. But, you know, we got to a situation where like towards the second half, we didn't really have to throw it. But, I mean, dude, me and you've talked about this. Yeah, he's missed some throws. But if you go back and every single time he's hit a receiver dead square in the hands, if those are all catches, I mean, he probably would be maybe 300 yards a game. Yeah, he would. Uh, um, but he probably would be playing for a Heisman if, if all those catches are, or, you know, whatever, the drops are caught. Could you hear that ad? No. Okay, yeah, I good. Just, I didn't hear anything. It was blaring in my ear. I was like, oh, my God. But, uh, yeah. yeah, no. Uh, Jalen Wright played great, 16 carries, or 23 yards, one touchdown. Longest was a 42-yarder. Jabari Small was very effective. Uh, his, I don't think his stat line really justifies, but he had 11 carries, 59 yards, one touchdown. Same thing with Dylan Sampson, nine carries, 49 yards, one touchdown. Squirrel White was kind of the main uh, receiver for the balls, nine catches, 104 yards. Longest was a 50-yarder. Um, Samson was getting involved. He was actually our yes. second-best receiver, two catches, 42 yards. And, again, me and you talked about this yep. for the last three episodes. You have – you have to get your playmakers the ball. It doesn't matter how you do it, whether it's getting your running backs out and, you know, screen situations, pitching it to them, whatever you got to do, you got to get your playmaker. And that's, it seems like, I think they finally have figured out that Samson and Squirrel are the, the playmakers, although yep. we've kind of said it all year long. <laughs> uh, yep. Those are the guys. And I think not having a tight end that's like a, you know, a true receiving threat has kind of hurt us because uh, Fant was just going off last year. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it looked good. You know, like I said, Beasley was killing it on the defense. Hadden uh, had a pick. He had a few deflections. For the most <laughs> part, the Vols defense played great. It's just we let every 10 plays, we would let a 60 yard play or something, you know, go. But, uh, but yeah, no, uh, I felt. That was the best I've felt so far. Um, South Carolina is a good team. Um, it, but, again, it's it's SEC night game at home, man. I mean, it is what it is. If Kentucky's at night, I'm going to be slightly worried, just to be honest with you. Ugh, don't talk to me about that. I already had that same thought. Listen, here's what I want to say about all the stats you kind of went through there. Uh, the tight end, I was glad you said that. That's where I was going to go. I feel like, you know, we've gonna, we're going to have Squirrel and we're going to have Samson, obviously – you know, I, I don't know that Small or Wright's going to be able to catch the ball in the backfield. Samson out of the backfield, I love that. I love it. He's fast. He really kind of is him out a there. Camara. And he wears yeah. number six, but, um, which that was but, a number Camara wore when he's here. But 
here's the deal. Either Jacob Warren or Castles, one of them has to step up and has to start catching more passes. And it seems like Warner, I, I mean, he, you I know, he like, stepped up a little bit. Yeah, he got the one touchdown. Warren. Like Castles, I think Castles runs a little bit faster, and I think he runs a little bit better routes. But he is, I mean, he is a pass dropping machine. Like, yeah, I'm gonna have to fix yep. that. Love you, buddy, but you are going to have to fix that. I think we want to see he transferred better. from BYU. Was it? Um, I feel like uh, they said BYU. yesterday. I can't remember where he's from, but uh, uh, maybe Cal. I, I don't know why I can't remember, but it don't matter. But I mean, apparently overall, he went to Cal, and he also went to UCD, yeah, UC I thinking, Davis. I was thinking <laughs> Cal, but so here's here's the thing. Overall, and you look at stats this game, because that's what we were just doing, you said you felt pretty good about the game. This is my favorite stat of the game. We won the first quarter. We won the second quarter. We tied the third quarter. We won the fourth quarter. That's what I want to see. Got to grind it out, man. We put a game together for once. It looked a little rough there in the third quarter for a minute. I don't know how nervous yeah. I felt about oh. that. Um, oh, Saucy was like, no, we need to bench yeah. Milton. I'm like, yeah. no, we don't. Guys, yeah. calm it, down. It calm look- down. It did not look beautiful, but hey, it was. It didn't look great, but it didn't look bad. And then it didn't look great, and then right. it didn't look bad. And then it looked really good, and then it's like, oh. <laughs> but, Here's the thing, though. Yeah. Even in that third quarter that didn't look great, we still tied them. All right. Yeah. I think for this team, given kind of where we're at on the talent level, I think we're down a little bit this year from last year. I think that you know, playing well, these games quarter by quarter is the way to go. That's my that's that's the only way to win. So. We're down a little bit on the offensive side, but we've stepped up on the defensive right. side. And right. I mean, credit to the coaching staff. We didn't get outscored a single quarter, and they tied us in the third, but we didn't get outscored right. at all. You know, right. so um as far as the total quarter now i think we were down 10 7 or something at one point but as far as each quarter we never got outscored so right um i think that's a big yeah um great win feels good it's it's you know i I can breathe a little sigh of relief but um you know tennessee had 24 first down south carolina had 11 um on third down we had uh, we went 7 to 15 they went 2 to 15 we had 477 total yards they had 333 we had 239 in the air they had 201 um on the rush i mean we absolutely grounded and pounded on 238 which if you go back and look at every game the balls have played this year we've been right down the middle which i actually like um, as far as like passing versus rushing, I mean, it's been pretty well balanced, but we had 238, they had 132. Um, we did have two turnovers to their one, we also had seven penalties to their four. Um, what do you think about some of those? Uh, because I think didn't we get like a taunting or something at one point, and then yeah, we everybody had... was talking about it, but I feel like I missed it. But didn't they try to like fake two punts back to back or something? They did. So it was very strange, and like I was, it happened right when I was like flipping the cheeseburgers. I had the TV out there. We were watching on the back porch, but like mm-hmm. it, basically they they faked the punt, and then they were going to leave the punt team on the field for the first down, and basically catch our special teams we got lucky because they stopped the clock um mm. and got back off there but beamer was pissed about that and you know it's it's smart and you play them and that was his wrinkle for the game and now everybody's gonna be watching that for the year and for the rest of the year for south carolina when you're do, good yeah. doing your walkthroughs your your special team is gonna have to learn how to play one defense that's just like it is what it is so yeah um i i did you notice that for punts for the rest of the game we basically played like a, a soft defense we didn't really play a punt return yeah. yeah um other than the one out of the end zone which i really wish we i was kind of upset we didn't go after that ball a little bit harder i really wanted to block that yeah uh, somehow I, like i said i missed that one because uh, i was going live and i was reading comments yeah. i mean i was watching and paying attention but I mean, you know how it is like if you're talking yeah, yeah. to other people or whatever, you're not going to catch every single thing that happens. But I mean, yeah, I did miss we them. had them. I, the one dude, he, they got lucky on that safety when he he rolled out over the top of us. We had him down, and he just like dove over the top of us to get the ball out. I mean, that I, I thought we had that one. That was good effort. I'm and where I wanted, he uh, dropped back and was like a toenail from. No, going well, back. I'm actually talking about the play before that. Um, oh, I, you're talking about where he on the run. 
Oh, that, yeah. I'm talking about that entire three plays they did down there because uh, they they threw twice and they ran once. And uh, I think I know there's at least the one where he looked like the, he was out of bounds. And then the one where that we it looked like we hit him in the end. Well, we did hit him in the end zone. I thought we were going to bring him down back there, but we let him snap like slide the first out one. Him. They handed it off to the running back because I remember he had to like basically just punch his way forward yeah. and try to fall forward and the other ones they tried to pass or whatever but well we I mean Spencer Rattler he gained my respect a little bit just like that one play when he did the QB sneak and then like literally dove over I think that was for a touchdown or a first down I don't remember exactly but you know he was trying I mean I just I can't take him serious at all I, I just I did not I, I hate him after last year's game frankly I never liked him because he went to Oklahoma you know I just don't like Oklahoma I have a personal thing with them anyway, so it's whatever. But, um, I mean, I felt like we played a good, solid game. Look forward to see what we can do the rest of the year. I'm a little nervous still. I I, I don't want to be one of those nega balls because there's some – I don't I'm sure you've been on Facebook today. But there's some of these days, we oh, suck. We're not going to win another game. Trust Guys, me, we're going to win another game, man. Like we're, I, we're I caught a lot bad. during the live last night. Yeah, we're not that bad. But, I, I mean, I am nervous. Um. But here's the thing. Our coaching staff did what me and you wanted to see, and I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, we we let them go. We let them play, and it worked out. So hopefully we continue to do that. I don't think South Carolina is that great a football team, if you want to be completely honest with you. I also think it didn't matter who we played. I think you know going into these night games is tough, and I'm very much afraid that we're going to get a lot more of these night games going forward because of how we are in rankings. But – uh, I mean, we'll see what we'll happens, see. but uh, just got to take it one game at a time, man. But uh, so we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to run through the rest of the games that we want to talk about. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, go Vols. Y'all enjoy the off week. Get some rest this weekend, boys. Dude, I'm going to enjoy the off week as well, just to be honest we're with you. We're still going to have a show. No, nah, I know we're still going to have a show, but I just mean, like, it's going to be nice to just kind of watch football and not have to, yeah. like, dissect it. But we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back, and then when we do, we're going to dive into these games. Don't go nowhere, baby. Little Tangerine Show will be right back. Hey, welcome, welcome back to the Little Tangerine Show. We're going to run through some of these games. Um, we're going to try to keep this episode like less than two hours tonight. But we're actually going to backtrack. We're going to start with the Friday games. Utah, um, you know, didn't put up much of a fight against Oregon State. Oregon State did pretty well against them at home, um, which they were favored to win by like two and a half points, but they won 27, or sorry, 21 to seven at home. Um, you know, Casper had Utah. I had Oregon State. To be honest with you, I just took the home team at night. I just felt like, you know, maybe they had a shot. But um, did you get a chance to watch any of that one? I, I didn't watch a whole lot of it. I did watch a little I did. But. Man, I watched most of this game. Um, you know, at the end of the day, this was Cam Rising didn't play. Unfortunately yeah. for Utah, still didn't play. Nate Johnson was okay. He just... I mean, dude, he was like eight for twenty-three or something ridiculous like that, hundred yards. Um, and then yeah, DJ, had, DJ was uh, slinging it. They had a hundred. Uh, Utah had one hundred fifty-one yards in the air, fifty-seven on the ground. Oregon had three hundred fifty-eight total yards, two hundred twenty-seven of which was in the air. Um, that really was kind. Of, I mean, they just were outmatched. I mean, they had close to double the passing yards and uh, had close to triple the rushing yards. I mean, just too much for them at home. Like you said, I think they're starting to wear down without having Cam rising. Um, but, yeah, you know, you hate to see it, but uh, it is what it is. Um, I, got, I got one more thing about this game before we move on. I just need to get this off my chest because this is going to be a thing throughout the week. All right. Mm-hmm. Time for you to sit down and buckle up. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. I'm ready. Fan bases of America. Hear my becking cry. Quit storming the effing football field. Quit it. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Tennessee fan. Cool. Stop that crap. I'm done with it. Quit it. Uh, this Tennessee. is over a number 10 team. It's. I mean, what, what's Utah? I think they were 10th coming into this game. Is that right? Uh, yeah. All right. Here's the deal. 
Uh, ten versus fifteen, or eighteen, or something like that. Nineteen, right? something like Whatever. that. Whatever. It's a top twenty game. This is not number one, two, or three. If it's if you're not three or better, quit storming the field. Tennessee stormed the field against Alabama. That was number one. I was fine with that. Anything else? Stop. Well, I mean, you stop know, it. Just quit. that was also a fifteen year drought. I mean, there was a Ole lot Miss more. did the same crap. They beat LSU. <laughs> yeah, and LSU let's ain't not, even that good. Let's not forget when was it LSU that rushed the field against Mississippi last year, and they were favored to win. <laughs> like that's, that's why it happened, maybe. But I, I, I just I noticed several different games. I'm like, what? What is this? Colorado, every time they get a win, rush in the field. Like, what? Why? Just no, just quit. <laughs> Stop it. It's stupid. You're taking the excitement out of it. So, for me, I love it. I think it's awesome. But I think that if it's not a top three team that you beat and you're not, and here's the other thing if you're four and they're three, don't rush the field. Yeah. You're both I that mean, good. Act like you've been there before. You ever heard that song? Like you've been there before. Yeah, uh, I mean, like you said, it, it's become hip and trendy to rush the field. It's 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 kind of like you know, it's basically just a photo op. I mean, let's just yeah, be real. quit it, quit it. Sorry, I'm just I I was really irritated about that a couple games over the weekend. I need to get that off my chest. No, you're great. That was a that was a great hard stance uh, for sure. I, uh, I I'm cool with it. Um, I can't say I disagree. Uh, well, you know, I, Casper got me rock hard about these Carolina schools, Don't even. Uh, you know, Don't even. I, uh, he, he was so convincing with his art. No, I'm just kidding. I really thought NC state was going to win this one at home as well, but NC state loses a close game by Phil go to the Louis- Louisville Cardinals. Um, they ended up uh, winning 13 to 10, which I mean, this game, you know, Louisville was favored by three and a half. So Vegas, you know, got it right on this one. Me and Casper were both, you know, um, picked NC State. Um, I'm sure you probably watched a, at least a little chunk of this one, right? Yeah, I want, dude. Since I got this thing set up now, I can come in here and do my eye racing at night. All these night games, I'm watching the rest of the year. I just race and watch football at the same time. It's fantastic. But basically, all you need to know is uh, Brent Armstrong threw two interceptions, lost the game ten to three, by three points. I mean, you can't throw two interceptions and win football games. Um, I don't know. Well, Louisville, Jack Louisville's Palmer. like snuck in here to be five and zero, oh, and and I mean I don't know if you've looked at their schedule, but I mean they they got Notre Dame, and then th- th- Louisville you know. has Jack Plummer, which I think might be Jake Plummer's son, who played for the uh, Arizona Cardinals for a while. Um, he played pretty well, two hundred eighty six through the air, one tud, two ints. Um, but yeah, I mean that you know it was just this was a great game though, and like I said, there was a lot of close games for sure. But uh, it was a good game. Me and Casper were both wrong. That's you know how I started yeah. my weekend off. But uh, you know, uh, great weekend for college football. But uh, any other points on that one? No, I mean. Pack was up ten nothing at halftime. I thought they had it locked up, and then I was like in the middle of my race. I came out of my race after I got wrecked, and I was like, "Oh, you sons of guns!" Speaking of blowing a substantial lead, USC at Colorado. <laughs> oh, yeah, here it is. I, it, which is it, it is kind of fun. I did chuckle a little bit at you, Casper, just to be honest, because uh, you sent me a screenshot of the Colorado game as if I wasn't watching it. <laughs> no, I was just. Just yeah, that I was actually watching football while I was. There. Well, no, it's just it's just funny because like people, you know, a lot of people will text me scores the Colorado game. I'm like, bro, have you not figured out? I'm, I, trust me, I'm watching. No, I just, know you're not telling me nothing. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not. Okay, <laughs> but, I know. Uh, but yeah, no, which they had that up at the tailgate grill out that you yeah. had. Yeah, up there. Uh, at, they had it up there on campus uh, where we're hanging out at. So. So USC um, absolutely came out and just I mean they were they were smacking Colorado in the mouth, which for the record Colorado didn't have uh, Travis Hunter or Shiloh uh, Sanders. So for for Colorado they basically essentially had three star players out, including mean, including just those two because as, as we said Travis Hunter is a star on both sides. People try to downplay him like he's not. Like, oh, he's not the best on off it. Listen, if he, if they need a play, that's where they go. Okay. Not, yeah, at least 50% of the time. 
Yep. Uh, yep. When they need to play, that's where the ball's going. And everybody knows it, but he still ends up making a play. But so Colorado or USC comes out 14 zip in the first quarter. Then they go up 24 14 at the half. Or sorry, 34 14 at the half. And it was pretty well looking like, okay, well, they're starting to run away with it. Um, you know, in the, in the beginning of the game, Colorado started out. Now, they were hanging in there pretty good until they missed the field goal and then turned around and threw an interception. That's really when the momentum swung. But they were kind of like you had the feeling like, okay, they're kind of sort of hanging with USC a little bit here. Um, but the thing is, is, dude, USC was never really able – to just give that knockout blow and bury Colorado. Like, as I'm watching it, I'm like, man, this don't look good, but they're still – it's it's like just when you thought USC was just going to put it out of reach, Colorado would come back and score. Um, and the other thing, too, which, you know, we, we can talk about here in a minute, but the, the Colorado crowd never left, which I think is phenomenal. Like, this entire game, they were there, they were loud, they were rocking – and um, I don't know very many like Power Five schools in America where their fans are going to stick around when they're up, you know, or getting blown out by like thirty points. But the fans stayed around. I think the fans ended up being part of the reason why Colorado came back in it. But anyway, so um, you come out uh, third quarter, and uh, you know USC and Colorado they were just kind of hanging around. USC put up fourteen, Colorado put thirteen up. And then in the fourth quarter, man, it was like USC wouldn't do nothing. Punt, Colorado, go down there and score. And then USC wouldn't do nothing. And then it, I think they had a couple turnovers as well. Um, There's a big interception at one point. Some things happened or whatever. I think they might, may or may not have for, uh, forced a fumble. I don't 100% remember. But it was just kind of like, okay. Uh, they scored with 11 minutes and 55 seconds left. Um. And at that point, it was 48-34. Well, then they turned around, got the ball back, went down there. And uh, now this time, they ended up scoring. There's like two-ish minutes left. Um, and it got to the point where they didn't have – I mean, if they had three timeouts and they had enough time to get the ball back, I really honestly think that they may have, could have went down there and scored again. But I definitely think if Travis Hunter's in this game, I think they win it. And I think if Shiloh's in there, they win it. But um, – you know, now obviously their their defense allowed forty eight points. So I think they've allowed like ninety points or something the last two games. But Colorado, man, just they're just one of those teams, man, that everybody still for some reason rides off, and they just almost came back and had a little bit of magic. But I think without those early mistakes from Colorado, though, I think that, you know, I think they could have won this one. Uh, if they hit that field goal, I think it would have been closer a lot longer, too. But, um, you know, I was really hoping I was going to win that money. It just didn't happen on this one. <laughs> it's coming. Don't worry, buddy. It, probably next week they got Arizona State. Um, I'll tell you what, this game to me, I, di I didn't get to watch this as much, obviously, because I was – down there but here's the thing um usc is not that good and usc is not the best team in the pac-12 at this point i would probably put oregon and washington over usc usc has given up a lot of points okay um and they let colorado without their two stud you know without their one stud uh hang around and i just don't see very much killer instinct i think caleb williams is on his way to another heisman uh 30 for 40, 403 yards, know. six touchdowns. Six I mean, touchdowns, bro. This guy, he is absolutely rolling. To be He's fair, gonna though, win the Heisman. to be fair, they've not played anybody yet, though. I'm kind of waiting to see what happens with well, that. And they're still going to lose some of those games, but they're still going to put points up. I just don't know that they're deep. I, I think they're going to give up as many points as they score. It's really my thing. I, their offense is fine, but their defense is not all that in a bag of chips. Um, yeah, as much as it pains me to say this, now I know, um, you know, Oregon's not flashy and they play on the grass with their 800 uniform combinations, but, uh, you know, and their mascot wears a chain. But, um, yeah, yeah, you know, I would have to put probably Oregon above USC at this point. Washington – I'm honestly, I feel like Washington and USC are kind of similar, you know, high powered offense, defense, eh, you know, but um, back to the Heisman thing real quick, 1600 yards, 21 touchdowns, one interception. 
Not touching that. Sorry. Um, as far as USC goes on their schedule, though, we you talk about that. So they've got they have a, a tough schedule remaining. They've got Arizona, they've got Notre Dame, Utah, Cal, whatever. Then they've got Washington, then Oregon. So I mean, right now said, technically they have three top ten games left. You go. said Caleb know. Williams has what? Huh. 1,603 yards, 21 touchdowns, and one interception on the season. Shador's got 1,781 yards, How many touchdowns? 15 touchdowns, and two interceptions. Six behind. I mean, I mean I'm just look, saying, look, like, look, if and stats he's won matter. games, uh, I, stats matter, and that's why <laughs> Shador's not there. So, I mean, dude, I. The only blemish Shador really has is Oregon, but I'm curious to see how that plays out. Because, man, I'm telling you, the thing that Shador has going for him, though, is like his daddy is is doubling oh, down on him. Here, here's the know? thing. You can't win the Heisman with four losses. So um, that's going to be tough for Colorado. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Um, but yeah, no, my my thing though, everybody's always like Caleb Williams. Caleb. I'm like, yeah, but for one, they ain't played nobody. But for two, statistically, Shador is kind of right there with him. I mean, Shador, they had similar stats: four hundred three, six touchdown, one interceptions. What Caleb had, Shador had three seventy one, four touchdowns, one interception. So he was two touchdowns short and about thirty yards short of Caleb ish. Um, by the way, Omari and Miller really stepped up uh, in the absence there for Colorado. Seven catches, 196 yards, one touchdown. They just could not stop him. Jimmy Horn Jr., seven catches, 84 yards, two touchdowns. So um, Xavier Weaver is normally the go-to, but they were really kind of doubling him up, and the other guys stepped up. So here's to see how Colorado bounces back. But, you know, they're still – uh, above 500, so we'll see what happens. But uh, that was a great game, man. I I really was sitting there like, man, I don't know. USC's coach, oh, you know, Lincoln must not have had uh, must not have had a fiery enough pregame speech. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, any other points on that one? No, sir. That's all I've got. Kentucky at Florida, or sorry, Florida at Kentucky. I guess we've jinxed them both. Josh Prey, we tried. We tried to, you know, do our part to throw a little good vibes your way, but we might have jinxed you. I don't know. Not sure. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, Florida, who me and Casper both picked, got beat 33 to 14 in Kentucky. Um, you know, I mean, what can you say? Uh, that Kentucky's running back was going off. Um, I mean, you know, I think – I don't think they let him rush for the Kentucky record. I can't remember if they let him beat it or not. But Ray Davis, 26 carries, 280 yards rushing, three touchdowns. I mean, an absolute beast. Devin Leary – only had 69 yards through the air, one touchdown. But, I mean, at that point, it, I mean, dude, just hand Ray the ball. <laughs> like, you know, I do think Devin Leary is the better game manager than old, you know, Will Levis. But uh, now, just for the record, Casper, Kentucky fans, they think they're they think that they're going to win the East, a lot of them, at least yeah. the ones that hopped on my live. <laughs> All right. They got two wins, Vandy and Florida. Hmm. Yeah. They're going to have a rude awakening at the cocktail party next week. <laughs> Actually, just to be honest with you, I did not know that game is next week. Oh, buddy, we're going to have a good show on on Friday. Y'all are going to want to come back for that because Castro's about to lose some more money. I can feel it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, dude, you know, Kentucky's fans was – it, by the end of it, I just started like getting annoyed because literally after the four thousandth time, somebody you know hops in my live and they're like, "Hey, what do you think about Kentucky? Hey, what do you think about Kentucky?" I'm like, "Screw Kentucky! I'm tired of talking about Kentucky. Like, why are we talking about them? It's not basketball season." Um, I mean, they've been playing good. Don't get me wrong. But, like, they started off 5-0 and last year, too. And, like Casper said, and ESPN said, they've had one of the easiest schedules in America so far. So. Hey, listen. Hey, this is what I got to say to Kentucky. Thank you. 
Thank you. That's what we needed. That's what we needed. Because now all we got to do is let Florida take one more loss and beat Georgia, and we're good to go. So thank you, Kentucky. Uh, we'll take care of business against y'all. I'm not worried about that. So Ooh. actually, I am extremely worried about that because that game <laughs> yes. is like the day after my birthday. That's definitely going to be a night game. This is uh, the one you were uh, afraid of last I know. year. I, well, all and, year, that and was and what I, I heard about. Preseason, I said I was afraid of it this year. So. Well, um, the only no to be fair, the only reason why I was like eh, last year was I was like, I mean, it's a home game. Like yeah. Will Levis don't play good against SEC schools, and it's at home. But uh, uh, you want me to give you some more bad news? Sure. They got an off week before us. Um, yeah, I, hey, we I don't, don't know. need an off week. Uh, I, I mean, I we're taking spoke. one this it week. It is Kentucky at Georgia next week, seven p.m. I, they they you, think though, that they're going to go down there and win that one too. Just for the they're rate. either going to go down there and win, or they're going to go down there and get humbled. One of the two, and it, it's probably not going to be close either way. It's just I, Georgia's. We'll, we'll talk about them, I guess, coming up. I mean, but Georgia hey, I got my just, first half bet right for T Fitty. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, was yeah. he like, trash talking your bet? Or I something? told him Kentucky to win the first half was a guarantee. So, and Kentucky won the overall game well, too. But, I did say I was going to go Florida for the game, but yeah. Anyways, but yeah, Kentucky fans are they think they're going to go down there and beat Georgia at Georgia? And I, they think they're going to win the East. I mean, it's, it's the year of the basketball school, son. Kansas, Kentucky, Carolina, Duke. Let's do this thing, son. Let's do it. It is. It is funny how that worked out. But yep, Kentucky. Wish you the best of luck. I think you guys are going to play Georgia close next week. I don't know that you're going to go down there and win. I don't care if, you know, the Weezer lead singer is their quarterback or not. I mean, it's just Georgia at home is a tough one. If, if that's a night game, then I don't know. Don't get your hopes up. Um, you know, we kept it to 14 points last year, so I don't know. We'll see what they do, I guess. But, yeah, either way. Um, moving on, Texas A&M versus Arkansas. Um, Texas A&M ended up winning. That was a neutral site game at the Cowboys Stadium. So, you know, I mean – uh, kind of a home game for the Aggies, but they did what they're supposed to. They got another dub. Um, you know, that was actually a pretty good game in the first uh, half, um, or I'm sorry, in the third quarter, um, and then towards the end it just kind of pet- petered out. But, uh, you know, Texas A&M, they don't have their starting quarterback for the rest of the year, still got it done. I still think if, if this was at Arkansas, I think that's a different game. But uh, Texas uh, A&M uh, – uh. I've been calling it sleeper. Watch out for him. Uh, Max Johnson, I know he's backup. He's pretty decent. Um, and I think, you know, get him in the rest of the year. I know he's going to be playing the rest of the year, so we're going to give him a shot. I know Wegman's done, but. Uh, I think Johnson, if I'm not mistaken, was starting at one point, and then he may or may not have got hurt, and then Wigman came in. I feel like I feel maybe. like I heard that somewhere, but. He's that's not complete a, garbage. The worst thing about him is he's from Athens, Georgia. I do know that, but. um. That's a uh, Brad Johnson's son, the, yeah. the Tampa Bay Super Bowl winning but quarterback. Other than that, I do, do want to go ahead and correct something I said earlier uh, in this show this year. Um, that Arkansas was going to be up there with Texas A&M at the top of the West standings. Uh, Arkansas is probably, from my assessment here, they're not going to win again for a while. I'm going to say their next win is going to be Auburn. Um, they're going on the road to Ole Miss, on the road to Alabama. They got Mississippi State coming to the house, and they go to Florida. I mean, like they're they're right now looking at a five win season. Sam Pittman's probably looking for a new job. Yeah, no, I think at this point, if they win out, that would still tie your prediction, right? Yeah, that's not going to happen. Like I said, uh, at Ole Miss, at Bama, they're done. That's pretty rough. Uh, hate it for you guys. Don't schedule neutral site games, though, against teams that you could probably I, beat. I, the SEC needs to fix that. I, so, this is similar to the Georgia-Florida issue. I, I do not like playing conference games in neutral site. I'm glad our Tennessee Voluntolds haven't signed up for any of that crap yet. <laughs> Except for ones that are in state. <laughs> I mean, you know. But uh yeah, no, um Texas A and M man came in, took care of business, did what they had to do. They won thirty four twenty two. I can't remember if I said the score or I'm, not. I just want to clarify, I'm okay with non conference neutral site games, just not conference That's a conference game. That should be at a home field. Like Virginia is a conference it's not a conference game, so that's okay. Yeah, but if we were playing Vandy 
and we decide to play Vandy in Chattanooga, I'd be pretty pissed. Or if we decide to play, <laughs> let's say, Kentucky and Nashville, that's pretty stupid. So um, that's pretty much what A&M and Arkansas do, and that's what Georgia and Florida do by playing in Jacksonville. So it's just ignorant to me. But anyway, moving on. Yeah, Texas A&M 414 total yards to Arkansas's 174 total yards. Uh, just manhandled them uh, in the Cowboys Stadium. So I'm glad that uh, – you know, anybody in that area of the Cowboys Stadium finally got to see some good football. But uh, moving on. Um, Texas team win even. Yeah, I know. Who would have thunk it? Um, but, yeah, so oh, 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 we we're stumbling over each other on that one. But uh, Clemson at Syracuse. We we both talked a lot of smack about Clemson. We both picked Syracuse to win. Um, Clemson, you know, this one was tight there for a minute. And then I th- – just their depth, they ended up pulling away with it there towards the end. But they ended up winning 31-14, uh, outscored uh, Syracuse 14-7 to in the first, and then it was 21-7 to at the half, and then they just kind of kept it rolling. But that first quarter, even coming in half, Syracuse was kind of hanging around. It was like, oh, well, yeah, maybe they're going to do something. But Clemson ran away with it. Yeah, I didn't watch this game, and I saw Clemson was up 21 nothing. I was like, whatever. All I got to say about Clemson is my granddad told me a long time ago, he said, son, he said, a, a chainsaw is kind of like a woman. And I was like, huh? And he's like, you know, sometimes you get them primed up, ready to go, and just it, they just don't go. And I think Clemson is like a chainsaw. Sometimes they go, sometimes they don't. I don't know what else to tell you. I, I, I have no idea. You spit on it, you know? I, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what to think about Clemson the rest of the year. They're three and two, uh, two conference losses, right? So I mean, I they're I you know I don't know, man. I I don't know what to think about Clemson going forward, but I we'll don't think out. they do either. Just to be honest right. with yeah, you, yeah, Dabo is like spinning his head, but they need to, he needs to figure out who they are, or they're going to start losing the recruiting battle because I think South Carolina is going to pull them on this recruiting <laughs> battle this year. Dabo had the recruiting in South Carolina actually kind of going for a while and. You know, now everybody it, else can pay for recruits, so he just he well, you know, can't keep up. I mean, just think about it for Clemson, though. I mean, it's South Carolina. It's like the dump of the South, anyways. And then, you know, now you're going to have Carolina's good, Duke's good, maybe. You got, you know, obviously you're always going to have to go against South Carolina. They got Beamer down there. He's pretty cool. You got Tennessee over here looking good. You got Georgia looking good. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm worried about the Clemson Tigers and the future of their operation. They better get something pointed in the correct direction. They better get a coach that's got a set. That's all I got to say. Mm. Can't say I disagree. Moving on, South Alabama at James Madison. We both picked James Madison. James Madison ended up getting the dub, uh, 31-23. Yeah, feel free to mark the time. I won't jump You're good. You're good. You're good. Uh, But – yeah, James Madison, 31-23 at home. Uh, they were favored by three. They beat the spread, seven points. Um, you know, not much to really say about this one. It was yet another close game. Now, I will say that James Madison had South Alabama kind of uh, handled there. It was uh, 24-7 to seven at halftime. And then just South Alabama kept chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And then, uh, you know, James Madison was able to hold off at the end, but, um, you know, James Madison was up 24-7 at the half, and then um, USA actually outscored them in each uh, quarter following that. So um, they really almost screwed around and lost it, but, you know, congrats to James Madison. Congrats to me and Casper for having two correct picks as well. Uh, Any thoughts on that one? Go Dukes. Next. Georgia at Auburn. Uh, Georgia had another underwhelming win, twenty-seven to twenty. They about screwed around and lost this one as well. Georgia yet again, zero for five on the spread this year. Yes, um, yes, indeed. So at this point, honest to God, I might just just bet against Georgia on the All spread right. the rest of the year because statistically, it's <laughs> looking like it might pay off. I don't know. I mean, did you watch this game? I watched the majority of it. I didn't watch all of it, but I did watch a good chunk. Of it. I had four games going at once, and the one that I watched is the one I had the audio on, and then I just yeah. glanced back and forth. So but. this game right here, in my opinion, Auburn is actually a football team again. I know I've made some comments about how dumpy of a town Auburn, Alabama is not that long ago. apologize to our friends down there. Um, but – 
Auburn's not that bad, but Georgia is not that good. Like, they are not. Georgia. It, here's the deal. In my opinion, Georgia should not have been ranked number one this week after watching this game because I don't I, – I, they're just – I would have put Oregon, USC, Michigan, I mean, Fama, Tennessee. Yeah. Like I, I, I just – I do not know about Georgia. I know they always play the competition, and that's not going to be good. Going forward for Auburn, though, I think I know they did not get the win, but that is as good as a win for Auburn after what they've been going through the last couple of years. I think Hugh Freeze is the answer for Auburn. I know that me and you had a debate over if they should have gone with Cadillac. Um, but, anyways, I think Hugh Freeze is the answer, and that's positive for them. And I mean, I, this football's this game, better when everybody's better. So I'm glad to see this Auburn game was. Cl- I mean, so Auburn went up 10 zip. After, at the end of the first quarter, and then UGA went into halftime. They put ten points up uh, in the second quarter, so it was ten to ten at halftime. And then they both scored seven, and then UGA yeah. just outscored them in the you know the second half there. But uh, you know Auburn had the ball going downfield. They got down to the um, the forty eight yard line, um, just barely across the field, and you know had three plays there. Um, and then that last play, man, it was fourth down. I mean, everybody was covered, so the quarterback just kind of dropped back. He's about to get sacked and threw it up and threw an interception. I mean, you know, he did he trying to do what he could. I mean, what much they could do on that last play. But, uh, you know, the biggest thing, and this is what a lot of us were talking about on the live, I just haven't figured out if Georgia is sandbagging on purpose or if they suck. But, they uh, suck. They but suck. But, dude, without – Without Brock Bowers, I mean, Brock Bowers manhandled Auburn on that last drive. I yep. mean, literally, they just dumped the ball to Bowers. Yep. And, again, doing what, you know, we've said the ball should have done this whole time. But at this point, if Bowers won the Heisman, I wouldn't even be mad. But eight catches, 157 yards, one touchdown. Um, he accounted for basically half of Carson Beck's um passing yards and or he whatever. only had like one or two completions coming into that last drive where they got a touchdown i mean he he dang near just put them on their back and carried them so um yeah great job for him i guess but again like georgia has been exposed in my opinion i cannot trust them going forward the rest of the year too i i guess they might make the playoff but you know they got some tough games coming up too i mean <clears throat> Kentucky's coming down there. It's weird that Kentucky, Georgia is kind of like Tennessee, South Carolina. It's just always kind of scrappy for whatever reason. It doesn't even make sense, but it is what it is. And they got to go. The only the good news for Georgia is they've got two road games left. Okay, at Vandy, at Tennessee, and then at Georgia don't even Tech. Have a stadium. So yeah, at Georgia win. Tech doesn't even count. Do we have Vandy on the list, or do you want me to go ahead and dump on them right now? They're not on the list, are they? Oh, they are. are. Never mind. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so Auburn only had 88 yards through the air. They had 219 on the ground, which doubled uh, Georgia's output. Uh, Georgia did have uh, 313 through the air, but I don't know, man. Bet uh, bet against the Georgia spread all year. I mean, statistically, yes. Yes. <laughs> even if you lose next next week, they would be five and one on beating the spread. But uh, moving along, Michigan at Nebraska. Michigan manhandled Nebraska. The only reason we got them in here is because they are ranked very highly. Um, but not much to say about this. In forty five seven, they came out, stayed ahead. Uh, kept it rolling. Uh, we may have to clip a few of these together just to get through them, I guess, because, you know, this is the section where a, b- a bunch of people got beat up. But Michigan stays undefeated, beats Nebraska convincingly. Um, Kansas at Texas, uh, you know, the battle of the football or the basketball schools, uh, Texas showed up and proved that they are, in fact, a uh, – they are, in fact, a um, – a football school, though, unlike Kansas. Kansas is better at football, but make no mistake, Texas is really good. Um, now, Kansas did have their backup QB in on this one. They did; they were hanging in there pretty good uh, until the third quarter where um, they had that fumble. Um, and if, after that point, it was just like, I mean, just completely deflated. But – at the end of the third, it was 26 to 14. It still looked like maybe they could come back and do something, but after they had that fumble in the third, it just it was like all the momentum was gone. Um, what's your thoughts on Michigan and Texas, though? I mean, you know, 
as far as like making a, you know, late year playoff run. <sighs> Texas is to be determined. Michigan at this point is proving it, but you know, they got hard ball, so they'll probably choke sometime down the road still in my book. Texas got their big test. Oklahoma this week sneaking in. That is going to be the game day game for the Red River rivalry. 12 o'clock kickoff. Yeah, there's... Thing ever. I don't understand why that game is at 12 o'clock every year, even though it always matters so much. I guess there was a, it's the state fair or whatever, but God. There was a, a lot of Kentucky fans that were like, well, you think game day is going to be at Kentucky versus Georgia? I'm like, hell no, they're not going to be at Kentucky. What? what? Yeah. No, it's Red River yeah. rivalry, baby. Oh. I know we watch SEC, but respect. Put some respect on their name. That's a big time yeah. game. No, they're not going to Kentucky. Here's the deal. Georgia. I've got their schedule pulled up here. Uh, they play Oklahoma, tough game. Then they're at Houston, BYU, Kansas, at TCU, at Iowa State versus Texas Tech. They beat Oklahoma. They're going undefeated. They're in the playoff. Yep. Yeah, I mean, right here first. Man, I you know right now I like Texas. I like Oregon. Michigan still kind of untested but they've got all the pieces back from last year um you know i i I like texas i like oregon um ohio state sucks who knows what's gonna happen with georgia if i like fsu there i don't know casper man this might be the year that there's not a sec school in the playoffs I mean, could be, could be. Depends how we beat up on each other. I think that is going to be the deciding factor in that game. I mean, it, in that, you know, it's matter. Got, it's got me worried. Yeah, um, fair enough. So, um, USF goes to Navy. Uh, for some reason, a lot of people thought that Navy was going to win this one. Um, but uh, USF 44 to 30. Uh, whipping up on Navy midshipmen for the Vols fans. That is Alex Golish's new team. Um, so I, I kind of like to watch them a little bit. But Alex Golish has replicated a lot of the offensive um, pros that we had here at Tennessee, keeping it rolling. But uh, any thoughts on that one? Uh, no. We had a lot of good, lot of good picks this week. That's all I got to say. There's a lot of green in here. I like that. I like that. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so moving on, uh, the the battle of the golden, um, irrelevant teams, Mizzou at Jeez. Vandy. Uh, Mizzou thirty eight to twenty one in Vandy's still incomplete stadium with pause. Casper. Pause. Not only on complete stadium, but they were doing work in the middle of the game. I was literally they were about moving. to say. Flipping bobcats on the dirt in the middle of the game. What in the tarnation is wrong well, with Vanderbilt I mean, University? Good hell, lord, go to the Sun Belt. Don't ever come back. I mean, hell, you know, Vandy wasn't going to do no work in the stadium, so somebody oh. had to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you sent me that picture with where you could clearly oh. see the guys with construction helmets, which. I, it brought me back to my days of working, you know, three Saturdays a month pouring yeah. concrete. <laughs> yeah. But uh, did not do any work in this game. This score makes it look a lot closer than where they got some garbage points there at the end of the game and fourth quarter. And this is not a game. And yeah, Missouri. Hey, look, Missouri's still five and zero. I mean, look, the SEC. You know, everybody wants to talk about the SEC sucks. They're all good. They're gonna have to beat each other sometime. So. I mean, everybody um, likes to focus on the irrelevant teams. Like but, you know, now Mizzou is sneaky good. They are good on defense. I'll give them that. Um, I can't talk too much crap about them, but they're just a lot better than Vandy. Vandy, you know, is is kind of like Gary Busey. There's just not much nice yeah. you can say, but it's hilarious to watch. Uh, yeah, that that's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. Moving on, Boise State at Memphis. This was, yet again, another good game coming down to the wire. Memphis held off Boise State 35-32. to um, It was a pretty good, even game throughout. Boise State, three zip in the first quarter. In the second quarter, 14-14. And this is points put up, by the way. Third quarter, Memphis put up a touchdown. Fourth quarter, um, Boise State put up 15, Memphis put up 14, but it was close game all throughout. Memphis was able to outlast Casper thoughts. Memphis, like I said, at the end of the year, they might have the best record in the state of Tennessee. Mm. Um, 
I mean, that- it was funny because people were laughing at me because at some point Memphis came up because I think this dude said he's from Memphis. And I was like, Memphis is interesting because the three things that they're known for is barbecue being like the shipping hub of the United States and violence. Uh, they're not usually known for football, however, but uh, mm-hmm. they are very good at basketball there. That's um, what I was about to say. It's a year of basketball schools, man. Yeah. It is what it is. I don't uh, want to tell you. Yeah, it is what it is, but good on Memphis That's making good the state win. of Tennessee look good. Let's not, let's not overlook that in all, in all reality. That's a solid win for Memphis over Boise State. I mean, Neither of, you know, Boise State is traditionally a decent football team, played a tight game, got the win at home. So, good job. Boise State is a Tigers. Boise State is a lot like Ohio State. They both have state in their name. Uh, they play nobody all year, get their hopes up and then get crapped on where they start playing good teams. And let's be honest, they both states are irrelevant and nobody likes going to those states for any reason whatsoever. So, um, you know, a lot of similarities there. Uh, (laughs) but uh, LSU at Ole Miss um, everybody was hopping on the line like oh my gosh did you see Ole Miss I'm like listen B words listen B words if you listen to the podcast me and Casper both picked them we told you it was going to happen no surprises here Um, they're all asking me like what's wrong with LSU and I said "I, I guess Brian Kelly's just not picking the right accent I don't know they they honest to God should be better than they are, but they're just not. Um, Brian Kelly's not the answer. No, I mean, yeah, I, I never really where he's been. Sorry. I really never was a big fan of Brian Kelly, but yeah, I mean, you know, he got to the sec championship last year as a consolation prize. The West is much better this year. Um, I think, you know, Texas A&M, I mean, they're kind of a little bit of sleeper. I mean, they were five games, uh, you know, a touchdown or less uh, from from having a totally different record. But this, I mean, dude, it's exciting, though, because the entire SEC is up for grabs. It's awesome. I, I freaking love it. I don't know, uh, you know, it, I just, I don't know where it's it's going to come from, but I'm, I'm locked in every, every year. But, uh, yeah. So this Any game, thoughts on this one? Did you watch this game or not? I watched a good chunk of it, but again, yeah, this it was is, this, this is, is one I had off to the corner. Yeah. But I just I knew that now towards the end I was live streaming, so I didn't get to watch the last half of it. But I, I just was sitting there like, man, I know yeah. Kiffin's gonna pull it. I know this is not your kind of game because there was no defense. Um, I don't know <laughs> if you caught the final score there. We scored a hundred and four points, but. Um, five to forty nine. I mean, this was just the absolute. The lowest amount of points scored in a quarter was seventeen in the third quarter, and LSU yeah. looked like they were kind of pulling back there. Um, they, you know, ah, uh, LSU I mean, like was, said, looked like they were going to walk away with it. I mean, honestly, kind of. Like I then, said, I don't understand. I mean, Jake Daniels four hundred fourteen yards, four touchdowns. Logan Diggs. 101 uh, yards on the ground. Jaden Daniels had 99 yards on the ground. I mean, Brian Thomas Jr., 124 yards receiving, three touchdowns. Malik Nebra, 102 yards. I mean, you look at them on paper, and it's like they just they should be a lot better than they are, but they're just not winning games. And I, I mean, like you said, the SEC's dog eat dog, man. I mean, that's the only thing I could think of is just, I mean, I think if LSU was in another conference, they'd probably be wearing it out. But, I mean, I don't know. I agree. Uh, Lane Train's got it, got the offense back to rolling. Lane Train ain't got to play nobody the rest of the year except for Georgia. Um, Your prediction you know, on Ole Miss? I mean, I it's, still it's, need Alabama to get some losses somewhere. Uh, go Vols. Um Go yeah. LSU. Anybody that wants to beat Bama, I'm down for. But uh, you know, I mean, Arkansas's I, really so far. Arkansas is kind of the only one that's uh, out of reach a little bit. Um, but, I give up on Arkansas. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's you know, like I, like I said, I'm down for it, dude. The entire SEC is up for grabs. Uh, a little bit of momentum shifts. I'm for it. Uh, but yeah, no. The over under that game was set at sixty six, and they beat it by forty points. Yep. So you know, uh, yep. awesome offensive game. Moving on, Oregon at Stanford. Oregon just got it rolling, forty two to six. I mean, just absolutely whipping up on them. What even close? 
Um, you know, I watched a little bit of this game, and then to be honest, but I just switched it off because I was like, okay, well, they're winning. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this one? None. Oregon's doing what they got to do. Stanford sucks. Bo Nix is, you know, doing his thing. Hey, I guess he could also be a potential Heisman contender. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, Oregon, unlike Georgia, is doing what they're supposed to do by beating the spreads. Moving on, Troy at Georgia State. We disagreed on this one. Casper was right. He picked Troy. I picked Georgia State. Man, I was just, I was really hoping I'd, I'd see Georgia State win it. I don't know why you're clapping when you got awesome ass sound effects, but uh, <laughs> hey, Georgia listen. State gets the loss 28 to 7. No henny flowing. No, no henny flowing. Henny flowing. Yeah, that's right. My boys from the state of Alabama got the dub. I mean, Troy's a decent football team, man. I mean, yeah, I they got all the rejects that can't get into Auburn, Alabama, and the rest of SEC. Yeah, I mean, right. yeah, the ones that you know either uh, yeah. don't have enough money to pay it's for the good grades. grades don't or lie, they, it's the grades, or they just uh, you know Not can't smart enough. Can't stay out of the clubs. Uh, yep. Is what it is. Notre Dame at Duke. Um, this oh. one's a weird one for me, but, uh, Oof. so this was a close ass game. Uh, Notre Dame ended up scoring late. Duke was moving down the field. Riley Leonard again had a terrible injury. Looked awful. I feel bad for him. Very Hendon hooker like deal. Um, you know, got hurt at a pivotal point in the game. He's kind of the, the, you know, centerpiece to that, that offense and really the whole team. Um, you know, ends up getting hurt. Uh, have you heard anything on his injury? Uh, he uh, No, he walked off. I'm guessing he'll be back. I tried to look up his injury as well as Brew McCoy's injury today. Uh, last comments on Brew from Coach Heifel was that we would hear something either Sunday or Monday. It is currently Sunday. I haven't heard anything yet. I think uh, it looked to me like he was going to have – he had a similar injury, but I think it was just a sprain. He didn't come out in an air cast, so – He's probably going to miss some time for Duke, and I don't know what that's going to mean for them going forwards. But it's a shame, man. This is a good game. Uh, this was a slobber this was a knocker. Great game. This was I a mean, slobber was... knocker until the fourth quarter, right? I mean, I mean, these are the games that I like to play. Like I like to watch. It's just tit for tat. Yeah. You know, no team really got the edge. Defensive type game. Now Notre Dame went up. And they were like 10 zip coming into half. And you're like, oh, man. Yeah. It was 10 zip for a while. And Duke just started chipping back into it late. Um, yeah, it was a phenomenal game, man. Um, Dude, now this one played really well until the end, man. That last drive was just like, oh. Well, so I think game day was talking about how coming into this game, I think they said that Duke – had not allowed a single play over 20 yards all year long, which is incredible because they've played some good teams. Um, their defense is way underrated, um, and their offense is is slightly underrated. I think their offense is even better than they get credit for. But uh, you're going to laugh at me on this one. So I picked Notre Dame to win. That was one of the only times that I got one over on you. But full mm-hmm. disclosure – Mm-hmm. Right before the game, on my official weekly pickums, Pat McAfee, man, he he got me, he got me, you know, had my nipples hard and everything for Duke, and I got lost in the moment, so I ended up switching it and picking Duke right before the game on my <laughs> on my official pickums. But uh, so I've got kind of two separate scores. That's why at the end I put podcast scores. Um, but yeah, no, I did technically officially change that one. So, uh, okay. should have stuck with my gut. Um, nope. but nope. you know, I, I could have probably slid past it and just like you, you may or may not have noticed, but yeah, no, I just, I was like, I gotta let him know. But yeah, no, uh, should have stuck with my gut, but Sam Hartman, man, uh, you know, he's looking more and more like an NFL quarterback every week. Um, but didn't do great statistically that game it definitely didn't do bad um so super moving cool. on super cool by the way of him to go over there and wait for riley leonard to come out of a tent i think um look duke had that game locked up man and they just they folded there at the end unfortunately i did want to cover the fact that this is my lock of the week and that they got the two-point conversion instead of an extra point and that did indeed bust my lock of the week they would just <laughs> kick the extra point i would be sitting here Yet again, correct. So uh, that was a shame. But 
it'd be like that though. Yep. Um, yep, do. Now you did get the next one right though. West Virginia went down to TCU. TCU was favored by twelve and a half. Ended up losing by three. Um, I TCU picked TCU. Ain't got nothing. Yeah, I picked TCU just because man, it's hard to go down there and beat a Texas team in Texas. But uh, they just ain't got the sauce this year, man. Max Duggan, you know. He was uh, he was the X factor for them. Um, but yeah, West Virginia wins that one, twenty four twenty one. Hard fought game. It was a great game. I mean, again, so many close games this week. It was insane. Hard fought game though. But uh, West Virginia grinded it out. Which I mean, I would rather have West Virginia win anyways. I just like being right. That's why I thought TCU was correct, but. I was the wrong. game-winning field goal with nine minutes and thirty-one seconds to go. That must have been an exciting fourth quarter. Let me <laughs> tell you. <laughs> yeah. Glad I didn't watch it. It was uh, it was something. Bama at Mississippi State. Bama again, unlike Georgia, doing what they need to do to beat these spreads. Uh, Bama convincingly wins at Mississippi State, forty to seventeen. Um, mm-hmm. I admit. I had Mississippi State, and Casper had Bama, um, despite saying that they were done and they were going to be trashed this year and Saban was going to retire. He's a uh, hop back on the bandwagon there. But uh, turnover Milrow, 164 yards through the air, no touchdowns, but he did have 69 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. He was their leading rusher, so – Milro is a phenomenal quarterback until he has to throw the ball. I mean, if they get in a throwing situation, that's where they struggle. But, I mean, if he can sit back, play read option and stuff, he's actually pretty good in those situations. But uh, How about Saban uh, getting back up on the boys, yelling at him? How about yeah, that? Uh, you know, maybe he does have two years left. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I thought he was done, and now I'm over here like, good God, we're 4-1. and one. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to play uh, nobody. <laughs> I mean, have you looked at their schedule? They got to play <laughs> us and LSU. That's it. I mean, and then after that, it's smooth sailing. Yep. yep. But yeah, they they need to lose five, man. They need to lose five. <sighs> ain't happening. For, ain't happening. For... Just go ahead and swap them in Arkansas there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they in Arkansas. Uh, but yeah, Bama doing what they got to do. Uh, Washington at Arizona, um, which I just realized, I guess. It I is did. 31 to 24, Washington. This was a tight game, tight game. Which was way tighter than it should have been. Um, way tighter than it should have been. And that's kind uh, of the, my hang night up with. Game, night game on the road. Come on now, don't be mean. But, I mean, Arizona's just not that good, though. Not this year. I mean, they're just not that good. You know what I mean? Like, this is this should have been like a three-score game. or what, so you They know, were for... up 28-10 to 10 was their biggest lead. And, I, you know, I mean, they got up, I, you know, on the road. I, I started I eating hot dogs and, and eating some chicken wings. I had to and... go to bed before this game was over. That, that yeah, no, I, it was because I didn't go to bed till like one o'clock. Just for the record, but... I was streaming until about one ish. But uh, yeah, um, I was streaming, but I, I just I didn't really watch this one that much. By that point, I was talking to the peeps, and I just kind of passed out. But uh, I started working on the notes a little bit, which came in handy. Now, some other honorable mentions. Um, some other close games, Cincinnati lost at BYU 27 to 35. Um, that was a close one. Nobody cared. U- Utah state, uh, beat UConn 34, 33. Now that one, if I'm not mistaken, I think UConn was up a little bit, but, um, there and then almost, or well, let Utah state come back and, and win it. But, uh, that was a close one. Arizona State lost twenty-one to twenty-four at Cal. Um, Cal at least you know got somewhat of a confidence boost this year on that one. Virginia lost twenty-four twenty-seven at Boston College. That one came down to the wire. And then oh, five. Oh, Baylor. Five. Yeah, that was. I felt bad for them, but I mean that was close. And then this was actually a good game, but Baylor versus UCF. Baylor coming away with the one point win at UCF in Orlando, thirty six thirty five. 
Um, dude, it was literally like I was just sitting there bricked up all day long. Like, dang, this is a pretty good game. Dang, this is a pretty good game. Dang, this is a pretty good game. Hey, babe, will you grab me another quarter slot? Holy snap, this one's a good game, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, mean, yep. I was just like, oh, God, this is awesome. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm like, I was sitting there like, man, this must be how Casper feels when he's watching cars go in circles on dirt, man. This is oh, awesome. yeah. God, yeah. Uh, we just, can talk about that. Don't get me started. We had big dirt racing last night, too. So, Yeah, so anyways, Casper's uh, 16 and 5 this week on the podcast picks. I'm 15 and 6 on paper, although technically it would be 14 and 7, but well, who's counting? Because I did officially change it, but, uh, you know. So, this year's ESPN season weekly pick'ems record, Casper is tied for second, 34-16. and 16. I'm right behind him, though, 31-19. and 19. However, I'm tied for sixth, which is, dude, it's been so tight. I was talking to, um, me and you was talking, I was talking to Dave Down, and I was talking to old Saucy Sauce, uh, Sauceman, and uh, everybody's talking about, like, man, this has been so much more fun than I thought it would be. And Saucman actually said, he's like, dude, this makes some of these, like, irrelevant games a little bit more exciting to watch when you got some skin in the game. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, dude. Uh, in, in the words of Kevin Bozeman, just bet money you don't have, and it really makes it that much more exciting. But, uh, yeah. you know, it's been fun. But now you did notice our, our week five winner. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> T.W. Cersei wins the week at 8 and 10. I came in second or with, I'm sorry, 8 and 2. I came in second, 7 and 3. But, oh, T.W. Cersei, Papaw oh, himself, Papaw. came through for the weekly win. God, we didn't have a prize because I wouldn't want to give that man a thing. Yeah, no good. Bro. But uh, uh we uh, might, I might I could get him some, get him a like hand and hooker rookie card that he you know, or give him a Dallas Cowboys pin it that he can Yeah, that Dallas office. Cowboys stuff's pretty cheap because nobody wants it. So that's probably yeah, a and, good option you know, to go with. It's awesome too, because it makes him feel good, but he's not actually a Cowboys fan, so yeah, <laughs> I mean, he needed some positivity. I talked to him on Friday. He's he's having a rough yeah. time. So hey, congratulations on the big dub, Pat Paul. <laughs> I'm still four games here behind Dave or down, and we're going to have to make some ground up somewhere, somehow. I don't know how, but I'm here to win this thing. I'm not, I did not come to finish second. If you ain't first, you're last, by God. I've really got to start making some hard decisions moving forward because, you know, the week of that Florida game, I, I didn't feel good about Tennessee, but I was like, ah, I got to pick Tennessee, right? But I, I really got to start making some some tough decisions because I'm like, I get caught up in these, you know, now there's been two or three times I've picked a team to win and lost by three points. But I'm like, man, if I, if I pick this one, I'm going to get one up on everybody. But uh, yeah, I got to start locking in a little bit more, but also the locks of the week. Um, I hit mine. Ole Miss plus two and a half. Casper just barely missed that Duke one plus six and a half. Uh, and Colorado plus 21 and a half did hit, baby. Old Prime is back and making me money. Um, but yeah, so uh, last thing we want to go over is the top 25 rankings, um, which I think they released. Yes, they have- they're in here. They're in here. I've got them. Just scroll down. They're there. Okay, okay. Um, they're dumb, by the way. I. It- you don't want me to talk about these this week. I should probably just let you talk, and I should probably just sit here and be quiet. <laughs> Did you mark the time down on this one? I, I, I uh, scrolled down too far. Um, very good. But, uh, yeah, so Georgia still retained the first position. Don't know how. Uh, not only that, but they're ahead of Michigan by like 70, uh, no, 65 points. I, I, I just, I don't. I know Georgia's undefeated, but so is Michigan, Texas, Ohio State, Florida State, um, you know, Penn State, Washington, Oregon, USC. I, as of right now, I just don't know that Georgia deserves to be in the first spot at this point. Um, it makes no sense to me. Uh, yeah. but they are first. Michigan, Texas, Ohio State, three, uh, sorry, two, three, and four. Florida State is fifth. Penn State, Washington, Oregon, six, seven, eight. Um, USC is ninth. Notre Dame tenth. Bama for some reason is eleventh. 
Um, Oklahoma and Washington State both are unbeaten. They are twelfth and thirteenth. Carolina is fourteenth at four and zero. Oregon State fifteenth. Ole Miss sixteenth. Seventeenth is Miami. Uh, Utah is eighteenth. Uh, um, I'm actually gonna pull this up on the screen share too while I'm thinking about it. Um, just so the people that are watching this later can at least see what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, um, Utah's 18th, Duke is 19th, Kentucky 20th, so they are ranked. They're ranked above Tennessee, which is interesting. Uh, Mizzou is 21st, Tennessee 22nd, LSU, Fresno State, and Louisville 23, 24, 25. There are a lot of of unranked teams in this top 25, Casper. A lot. <laughs> what do you mean unranked teams? Or sorry, uh, undefeated teams. Yeah, there's there's still a lot out there. That's what I've been trying to kind of look at the schedules as we go through these games and see when we're going to have some more. However, this week does not look like the week um, coming up. I'm glad, I was glad to see my Tar Heels uh, go up on the their off week, their bye week. I was surprised to see them go forward on their bye week, but whatever. I would like to know why did we drop a spot? I I I'm I don't understand why did the tar the, the, the Vols go down one? We beat the spread. Uh how do we lose a spot to Missouri? I'm 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 confused. I know Missouri's five and oh, I guess, but it's just like I mean Mizzou beat Vandy and yeah, jumped like us. I mean I jumped two spots, by the way. That's you know, it's whatever, but I just I don't understand that. Um, really, I, you know, I think that's a bunch of crap. I really, like you said, don't understand the top Georgia. I don't, I don't get that. Um, Georgia right now is like a fifth place team to me. And honestly, Oregon and Washington probably deserve to be higher up. So, I um, think should be number one. I know it's a loaded question, but. <sighs> I mean, I'll tell you mine right now today. I would probably say either Texas or Florida State would be my number one. I, um, I understand why Michigan's up there. They've been beating the spread uh, bet, well better than Georgia has. Um, but, I mean, right now my number one would probably be Texas and then Florida uh, State would maybe be my number two. Uh, nothing I against would. Georgia, but it's just – I mean, you got to beat the spread. I go Texas as well, and I really think, you know, if they beat Oklahoma this week. Honestly, dude, I think I'd beat Texas, Oregon, one and two, uh, Michigan third. And maybe it should be Michigan number two, but I that's just where My I'm at with it. The only thing with Texas and Florida State is they beat some good teams. Not played, beat some pretty good teams so far. Um, that's why I would give them the edge over Georgia and Michigan. Ohio State, <laughs> Um, Who did Florida State play that's a good team? Well, they beat um, – Technically, they beat a number five LSU, but LSU ain't got jacked. Well, they're – I mean, but it's easy for us to say that. But, I mean, they have lost to some pretty good teams so far. Um, you know, I mean, LSU kind of has the same thing going on that LSU and Texas A&M had last year. With the whole, like, they lost a couple times. People wrote them off, but it was, you know, they lost to Florida State last year, too. But uh, I'm trying to pull up the games that they've already played hey. for Florida State. I know that they beat um, – They beat LSU, and then they played a bunch of nobodies. They got they beat LSU, Southern Miss, Boston College, and Clemson. They had their bye week this week, so – Which, I mean, Clemson – But LSU and Clemson are still – better teams than anybody that Georgia's faced so far. Um, they're also better teams than really anybody Ohio State's played so far. I think Michigan played um, – I feel like they played one decent team so far. But, you know, that's why I would put, like I said, Texas and Florida State above the other teams, though, just because they've actually played some halfway decent so teams. And they've also spanked the spread a couple times. The thing that Michigan has going for them is Michigan has not given up more than seven points in a game yet. They play Rutgers. They, well, they played East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green, Rutgers, and Nebraska. Seven points. They've given that up three out of five games, and that is it. Which, I mean, Rutgers is a decent team. Nebraska is definitely down right now. But, uh, 
yeah, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, they're undefeated. They're doing what they're supposed to. I think they're doing a better job than Georgia at making their case, which I think everybody's just like, hey, we're going to keep Georgia at number one until they screw up. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, so the thing about that this week, the votes have changed. Georgia only got 35 votes to be number one. Michigan got 12. Texas got 10. So some people are also thinking on the same line that we're thinking on. I think if Georgia comes out and looks bad against Kentucky this week, uh, Texas, I don't know who they've got. Texas got Oklahoma. I do know who they've got. If Texas comes out, beats Oklahoma, and, and looks good doing it, Georgia you know, struggles against Kentucky, Texas might go to the top. Who's Michigan got this week? Doesn't um, matter. They don't play anybody until they play Penn State. I do know that. Um, Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, the big pen for you, man. Um, yep. yep. Same thing that Ohio State's got going on. But uh, other than that, I mean, I definitely don't understand. I think Oregon should be a little higher. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, respectfully, I think that they should maybe be a spot above Washington, um, if nothing else, because I just think Oregon's a better team than Washington. Um, yeah. But looking at the rest of these, I mean, for the most part, I would maybe have North Carolina above Washington State. But for the most part, I mean, I think Kentucky above the Vols is fair. I yeah. mean, they – you know, convincingly beat the team that we lost to. Right, so. and they're five and zero. Plus one, I think. So for as far as like Oklahoma, so this week coming up, let's just kind of talk about that a little bit. Teams that have potential to fall here is going to be Oklahoma could fall hard. Uh, I don't know who Washington State's playing. Carolina has got Syracuse, which was a ranked game, not going to be a ranked game now after their loss to Clemson. So that's not going to look as good for them. All of a sudden, their schedule is kind of starting to look a little bit weaker as we go through the season um but you know they're probably going to go undefeated slot up like i said oklahoma you got to imagine texas is going to get oklahoma probably right i mean yeah uh, so we'll see what happens but I, I, this whole it's kind of kind of dumpy because we're not going to know here really for another couple weeks where everybody stands so we'll see what happens but I, i'm okay with it i just really tired of seeing georgia at number one even though they haven't done anything to earn it yeah, you know, it'd be like that sometimes, but, uh, you know, um, but I mean, that's pretty much, um, you know, well, let me rifle through my notes that I kind of skipped over. Um, uh, let's see here. Random question for those of you who my ball fans left as we, as we get into our closing here. Um, how do y'all feel about Kamal Haddon now? Let us know on the socials this week. I heard a lot of complaint about Haddon. He got a pick six. Do we like him now? Just curious. <laughs> I heard a lot of disrespect. I was curious how y'all are feeling now. <laughs> I'm actually I might make that our fan question of the week. Uh, Casper might have the fan question of the week on that one. Uh, I'm going to mark the time on that, too. Um. But, yeah, no, I mean, the only other notes that I had, because, like I said, I really honestly skipped over them. Uh, so, that UCF game, uh, the fourth down, Terry McLean absolutely balled out in that game. Uh, that was an incredible play. I don't know if you've seen that one, but he, like, ran around in circles for, like, it, what felt like 15 seconds and made a big play. Um Baylor did, however, I mean, they had a 28-point comeback, which that was the biggest comeback in school history. Uh, like I said, I literally I took notes all day long, and then I didn't pull them up because I didn't get them all in. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to throw some of them in here at the end just because I, I, if not, it was a massive waste of time. The other thing I thought was interesting is Penn State has a current hot streak going. They got nine wins by 14-plus. They got 12 straight 30 plus wins. Um, and then uh, they scored in 32 straight quarters. I thought that was interesting. Other than that, I mean, it was a freaking awesome weekend in college football. Um, yet again, I kind of dropped the ball on the fan question, but I will, I'm just going to like throw out some general thoughts from the live. A lot of people still think we should bench Milton and play um, Nico. 
Um, there's quite a few people, a Kentucky fans specifically, that think that they're going to win the East. I already mentioned that. I know. Um, Enjoy Georgia. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to find out this week. I mean, if your quarterback can't throw more than 75 yards, though, you might have a problem. Hey, listen, um, listen, I still me, like him better than Levis. but Let me set it up one for the Kentucky fans. Y'all beat Georgia this weekend. All right. Y'all beat Florida. Y'all beat Georgia. We'll beat you. We'll roll right on, baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, We're going to right some wrongs. But, uh, yeah, other than that, anything else you want to throw in? Hey man, it's been a great week. I'm looking forward to it. See y'all on Friday. Come on back here. I'm going to have some picks up and ready to go. I think there's going to be a couple of upsets I'm going to pick. So y'all be sure to tune in for that. Other than that, thank you. To, uh, always as my number one host, Big Drew, thank you for letting me be here. I love it. Always have a good time. This is partly your show now. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, we're we're trying to get this thing locked and loaded, guys. I mean, we're – this is probably the most efficient that we've ever been. Currently, when we are, we're recording this, we're about, like, an hour ahead of schedule, about 50-ish minutes ahead of schedule. Um, but, yeah, so next uh, episode, this Friday's episode, balls have a bye week. So, I know there's a good chance I may be doing some hardcore grilling this weekend. I don't know. We'll see. But we're going to do our what's – the grill segment we're gonna you know talk about what we may or may not be throwing on the grill this weekend we're gonna be doing some locks of the week um all kinds of fun stuff um you know for those of you that's been playing weekly pickings i mean don't feel left out i mean you still can hop on and play now it's gonna be hard to win that uh, end of the year prize of but the uh we will do the bowl games y'all be there gotta be on there for that we're gonna do the bowl oh, games oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You guys, I mean, like I said, make sure you share this with your friends, like, comment, leave us a review, all that fun stuff. Um, we truly don't have a clue what we're doing. But, yeah, uh, if you want to get in on the week of the pickings, just go to www.bigdrewski.com. It's right there towards the top. You can also listen to this as well as all the other podcasts. Um, other than that, I don't think I really have – I I considered going on a couple rants, but uh, I you know man today was a good day, it was a good weekend. I really just wanted to end on a positive note. Um, but yeah, we need to be you know we need to keep Mika or Nico on the bench, guys. Like I really get tired of hearing that. But uh, other than that, um, it has been fun. This was episode what forty two forty one. Woo, man, season two, episode 41, 41 episodes in one season. That is insane. We're up to, heck, I don't even know how many total episodes. Approximately um, 75. Yeah, 75-ish. Uh, I'll check that real quick while we're stalling. But, uh, yeah, um, I look forward to this bye week, just to be honest with you. Um, we're still going to break down some games, but it'll be nice for us of all fans to heal up a little bit. But uh, other than that, we're going to go ahead and get hey, on hey, out hey. of here. Whoa, 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 whoa. One last fun one for the road. Mm-hmm. Seahawks or Giants, Monday Night Football, who you got? You said who? Seahawks or Giants? Seahawks at the Giants. Give me the Giants. I mean, Jalen Hyatt. Hyatt baby. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Give me the Giants. I mean, Jalen Hyatt, it's hard to not root for him, you know. Um, but, yeah, Giants at home. I mean, I, I like to root for the home team anyway. So, give me the Giants. Go Braves. Go Braves. Keep on rolling. But I am Big Drewski. I am Casper, the co-host. And we are going to get on up out of here. We will see y'all Friday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your Monday. Hopefully we made it slightly better. If not, yeah, I mean, we did the best we could. Till next time, we're out. Peace. <laughs>